Um, so for today's paper reading, uh, we're going to be covering the model context protocol. This is um, from Anthropic. It actually was released back in November, um, but I've been seeing like a lot of hype uh, around it recently. So we thought it would be good for us to cover it uh, today. Um, before we get into the good stuff there, I just want to call out, uh, we will be doing Observe again this year in person in San Francisco. Um, if you want to grab a ticket, you can use this uh, promo code. Uh, definitely recommend it. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'll be there. Um, and it's going to be a really great event. Um, one last thing to cover before we jump into the content for today, just like to do the AI industry updates. So GTC is currently happening yesterday. We kind of had the keynote. There were quite a few releases um, from the NVIDIA team, but I just kind of want to call out a few of the big ones. I think the thing probably that's most relevant to all of us to here is probably that new chip. Um, you know, chips are very related to the models because we need kind of extensive memory uh, for those models, extensive power. So those chips are going to be really um, important for any kind of model uh, developments that we have. Um, and then just some other industry news. I guess it's somewhat related, but Google did acquire uh, the security firm Wiz for $32 billion. Uh, that is their biggest acquisition to date. So I definitely thought that that was newsworthy. Um, and then we have another um, um, a research company out of China releasing some new models. Again, they're designed to be comparable with um, 4.5, which is kind of this new model that OpenAI has kind of been teasing to us. So um, just some industry updates before we hop in. So um, kind of a agenda for today, we're going to do kind of an introduction to MCP. I'm going to talk a little bit about like what problem it aims to solve, how it works, um, talk a little bit about what it means for different development and, and why you should care. And then at the end, we'll kind of hop into Claude Desktop. I'll show you a little bit about how you can use it. Um, and as always, feel free to drop questions in the chat. I'll be watching it and I'll answer them as we go. Cool. So I think before we can really talk about like what the model context protocol is and, and how it works, I think it's important to kind of understand what the problem it aims to solve is. Um, and really it is tied to the fact that even the best models that we have, um, they're limited by the data that they're trained on. They're, they operate in isolation. They have no uh, concept of like fresh data or the real world in current time. And so to overcome this, we often are relying on external tools to give the LLMs, um, you know, fresh data. But to do this, it creates a lot of problems. Um, every connection that you create for like a new tool or a new system that requires a custom implementation, when you have these kind of very complex systems with multiple uh, pieces interacting with each other, it can be very difficult to maintain and scale. Um, and until then, or until now, there's been really no standard way to securely kind of pass context between uh, the actions that your AI system has been taking. So this is kind of the problem that it aims to solve. Um, but what even is it? Um, it's a universal and open standard designed to connect AI systems with external data and tools. So it really is enabling developers to build the secure two-way connections between their AI and whatever external functionality it needs to accomplish its task. So rather than needing to write something custom for every integration that you have, you can just use a model context protocol to do this. Um, you know, I saw, I forget who it was, but there, there were some... Um, uh, content creator I saw who described this kind of as like USB for AI. And so instead of just having, you know, a bunch of different connectors, like you can think of your computer, if you had a bunch of different devices with all different types of connections, um, it would be really a mess. And, and MCP acts like the USB where basically it standardizes how um, the tools and database and actions um, interact no matter the source. So even though this is coming from Anthropic, you can use this with any application, any foundation model that you're working with. So very, very powerful. How does it work? Well, there's three basically components that this is made of. It's a client server architecture. We've got the host. Um, this is like the AI system. So you can think of this as like your AI app that you're building in like an LLM agent. Um, if you have like Claude desktop, that's a great example, or like a coding ID, like cursor, windsurf, any of those, uh, those are going to be your hosts. And then you have a client, and this is going to be the component that handles the connection between your host and the servers. Um, so um, a server is going to be basically whatever program you have to expose capabilities or data to your host. Um, so this can connect to local files, databases, APIs, any external services. And this is like the window into the external world that we're giving our system. 
Um, this is a diagram right out of the docs um, for model, uh, model context protocol. So you can see here, we have that host. Um, these are protocols that are all connecting to servers. And then each of these servers, these are gonna be like your tool functionality or you know maybe it's your rag system uh, where it's connecting to either like a local data source or maybe you're using APIs to call something externally. And so these are just, again, standard ways um, to connect to these sources. Uh, I think one of the common conversations I have around MCP is like, what's the impact on like AI agent development or, or just development in general? Um, and I think one of the first things that always comes up is like, what does what changes when we're talking about function calling? And I see this kind of commonly being confused. MCP doesn't replace tool or function calling. It really is empowering it. Um, it's just a standard pipeline to make these calls. So it's really reusable and secure. Again, you don't have to worry about creating a custom integration every time you want to add one of these to your system. Um, before you had to like write that custom code, it was really hard to reuse unless you really thought about creating a standardized process while developing. But now with MCP, um, we have the standard interface. So you write it once and then you can use anywhere, no matter what. Um, so it just really allows you to be more reliable and, and do it at scale uh, versus before. It just definitely took a lot more custom integration work. Um, what about RAG? That's another thing is like, what does this mean for RAG? Can I use it for RAG? Does it replace? Can I not? Do I need to think about RAG separately? Um, Similar to tool calling, RAG needs a retrieval pipeline. MCP is going to standardize it. Um, you know, without it, there's all these manual calls. With it, you have this kind of declarative access to any file source. Um, so again, scalable, easier to maintain. Um, it can reduce the chances of hallucination um, if you're just by adding RAG to begin with. Um, and then it, you know, enables more complex, I think, multi-source RAG flows without, you know, extremely custom glue um, to keep it together. Um, and I always like to conclude these slides, like, why should we care? Um, I think that these are kind of the, the top things that I would call out. Um, so streamlining AI engineering, again, you're building once, you're connecting many times, you're reducing the boilerplate code and custom integration, um, easier to debug and maintain, and then it's scalable architecture. Um, so it's letting you focus on the intelligence, not the plumbing. So you can spend a lot of time thinking about what the tools are that your system needs and less time really thinking about, well, like, how am I going to connect kind of the LLM to these external calls? Um, there's a question about the deck. We'll definitely show that out um, after um, so that you can uh, access that later. Um, and then the other part is like, I think it from like a product perspective is like it unlocks faster product uh, velocity and, and flexibility. So again, because your AI engineers are not needing to worry about how to get like the connection set up, they can just focus on the functionality. Um, it just makes it so you can get to market faster. Uh, it's easier to swap out models, vendors, and tools because everything is universal and it works with any um, model or any vendor. Um, it's just going to make it so that you don't have to think about the way that your tools are formatted. Um, so super powerful there. Um, again, consistent performance and reliability. And then I do feel like this will reduce technical debt over time. Um, even with our own internal um, AI agent, um, there's things that we know are like on our backlog to make things work easily. We have a lot of code that's reused. Um, and, you know, as we think to switch to something like MCP, um, it will help us reduce that technical debt over time. Um, and so I, I see this as kind of being a to future-proof your AI product roadmap. So I thought for the, the rest of our session today, I can kind of show you a little bit of how to use this. Um, I'm going to use Claude Desktop. There's a really great, um, I can drop this too, um, a really great example in their documentation. Um, I, I found their documentation to be really thorough. There's a bunch of different SDKs that you can use, um, a lot of different quick starts. We're going to be going through today this desktop users one. We're going to give get, give Claude Desktop access to one of my file directories. Uh, I'll just kind of show you how you walk, um, walk through that, how you set it up, and then we can kind of get the query um, to Claude and see how all of this works. But there's a lot of different tutorials. There's so many different um, example servers you can choose from. So just as an example here, we're gonna do the file system one, um, but there's database, there's Google Drive, you can use it for development tools, you know, web browser, productivity, 
Um, and then these are all their like official integrations, which is really cool. So it just a lot of out of box um, tools, which I think is like really um, helpful. Um, so I think there's a lot of commonality between different agents, like something like a file system. There's probably a ton of agents um, that use that. And rather than needing to build something from scratch, you can just kind of reach for one of their example servers, which is, is really cool. Awesome. Let's jump into it. So I've gone ahead and I've got um, Claw Desktop on my uh, laptop here. Um, to get started, all you really need to do is come to your settings page. Um, you'll see this developer tab. If you don't have um, a config already created, if you push edit config, it will actually automatically create one and open it up in your directory here. So. Um, you can see this Claude desktop. I've already added it this morning, um, but I'm just gonna go ahead and open that up in cursor here. So it's blank to start. Um, you can configure this to be whatever you want it to be. I'm just gonna pop over here um, and grab the example um, from their docs here, which is just simple JSON here. And so what we're looking at here is just passing in which directories, I'm, I'm pulling in this uh, model context protocol that they've already created. Um, and then I just need to give it use access to the path that I want it to. So I'm gonna go ahead and paste that right into my JSON config file here. We're gonna update these files. I'm actually just gonna give it one for today's purpose. Um, and I've got this dev directory that I like to work in. So um, this is just my go-to for whenever I'm doing kind of development work. I have a, just a blank directory there. So I've gone ahead and updated that super easy to do. Um, and then we just need to save and just restart plot. So I'm going to go ahead and reopen that. And so the main difference from when I added the config file to now is you can now see I have 11 MCP tools available and imagine this grows the more that you add. But um, because I'm using the file server, um, I just have these all listed here. So it tells you exactly all the things we can do. You can create direct directories. We can um, get the tree, edit files. Um, you can also read files, search files if you're looking for specific items. Um, so yes, this is going to be really, really helpful. And to use it, it's pretty easy. You don't need to call anything specific. You can just go ahead and ask it to do something. So for example, I'm going to say, write me a short poem and save it to my dev directory. There's probably going to be, yep, I was going to say a little pop-up here. Um, it's just kind of giving permission to edit your files. So I'm going to go ahead and allow for this chat here. And Claude will write out the poem um, after we give it all the permission. It's going to save it in a specific file. We can adjust this. You can imagine um, if you don't want it in a text file, you want it in markdown for some reason, you can go ahead and adjust and it will save. And so it's saying, okay, I've written the poem. You can go ahead and check it out. Let's open my finder here, go over to dev. And you can see here, it has gone ahead um, and written that poem and saved it out. Um, this is a really simple example. Um, the reason I wanted to show this was just that I, I think that this is really powerful um, for folks that are developing, especially I think with agents, when you have to manage all of these external um, tool calls or functionality. Um, and I just know from experience that writing all of that code to create the pipelines can be difficult. And so having this universal um, framework that you can rely on and just purely focus on the functionality and what you need your agent to accomplish, I just think is really, really powerful. And you saw in five minutes here, we were able to pull in one of their existing um, MCPs, use it. Um, and I think that's really powerful. So excited to see what's um, being done with this. I've seen a lot of kind of hype on, you know, socials and in the community. So excited to see uh, where things go. Any questions? I know it's kind of high level. Um, I definitely recommend folks check it out. Ton of great examples in their docs. Again, um, great tools for developers to get started, but um, I guess last call for questions before we kind of um, wrap up maybe a little early today.
Não. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for joining us. As a reminder, I'll throw this one more time. Um, please join us um, at Observe. It's going to be a really great time. Um, a lot of great speakers. You're going to learn from some of um, the industry's best um, and get to see kind of what Arise is working on. Feel free to use that code to get your $50 ticket, and we'll look forward to seeing you all in June. Thanks, everyone.